Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to ESG Talks, a Cape Area podcast series focusing on environmental, social, and governance ESG. This podcast series highlights various ESG hot topics and includes commentary from prominent voices within the ESG community. In this episode of ESG Talks, Pat Welch, KBRA's Chief ESG and Ratings Policy Officer, speaks with Shannon Doherty, the Volunteer Program Director of Partnerships for Parks, a private-public partnership between New York City Parks and the City Parks Foundation. Partnerships for Parks supports and champions neighborhood volunteers by giving them the tools they need to advocate and care for their community parks and green spaces. KBRA has been a supporter of Partnerships for Parks for the past few years, and every year on Earth Day, KBRA employees volunteer to help revitalize a park in New York City. Pat and Shannon talk about how Partnerships for Parks work fits into the ESG movement and discuss KBRA's upcoming Earth Day event. Thank you for joining me today, Shannon. As we approach Earth Day, I'd love to hear more about the work Partnerships for Parks does. KBRA has a concerted focus on ESG, uh, which is an investing movement focused largely on creating positive environmental and social impacts as the world shifts to a low carbon economy. Can you talk about why Partnerships for Parks was founded and how it fits into the mission of ESG? Sure thing, Pat. And thank you so much for having me on today. In the wake of the fiscal crisis of the 1970s, New York City was struggling and severe budget cuts to city services hit our city park system particularly hard. When these spaces became neglected and dangerous, it was really community members that came together to reclaim city parks and transform them back into thriving community spaces. Partnerships for Parks was founded in 1995 to support these community efforts and help grow the movement bringing communities together with both city government and private resources. We began supporting and cultivating a growing network of local grassroots groups of all sizes to care and advocate for their local parks, particularly in really high needs areas. We also engaged individuals, businesses, and larger organizations in the effort. Today, we are one of the largest community engagement programs for local parks and green spaces in New York City, supporting nearly 500 groups working to sustain roughly 350 green spaces and engaging over 25,000 volunteers annually. As a joint program of City Parks Foundation and New York City Parks, we're in a unique position to mobilize partners across public and private sectors to advance this work. Regarding Positive impacts as the world shifts to a low carbon economy, while supporting urban parks actually plays a critical role in reducing carbon pollution. The trees in parks and along city streets remove over 700,000 metric tons of air pollution and trap more than 90 million metric tons of carbon each year. Parks and trees are one of the most efficient ways to combat extreme heat, cooling entire neighborhoods and reducing temperatures by as much as 17 degrees, according to a recent study. Our parks provide protection from the growing threat of heat waves, drought, severe storms, and sea level rise, while reducing the various public health challenges compounded by climate change. By supporting communities to advocate and care for their parks and green spaces, we help ensure these spaces thrive, directly impacting our urban environments. Great. Thank you, Shannon. As climate change intensifies, parks and green spaces are becoming increasingly important as cities work to mitigate the effects of global warming. But there are obviously lots of positive spillover effects as well. Can you talk about some of the biggest benefits you've seen in developing and expanding parks and green spaces throughout the city? Yeah, so there are really so many benefits. Urban green spaces have well-documented health benefits for people and the environment. Because we're a public-private partnership, our work in this area has exceptionally broad reach. While we inspire communities to become involved with parks, we also inspire the philanthropic community through City Parks Foundation to direct resources towards parks, along with inspiring city government to create policy, drive budget decisions, and engage people to help parks reach their greatest potential. I'll give you an example. Our Catalyst program, working extensively in historically under-resourced parks for over 20 years, 
inspired the creation of the Community Parks Initiative launched by Mayor de Blasio in 2014 to create a more equitable park system by investing in parks located in densely populated neighborhoods with higher than average concentrations of poverty. In some cases, the existence of active community groups, many supported by partnerships for parks, determined which sites would be considered for the Community Parks Initiative. Key elements of the Catalyst program were also incorporated, including our rigorous on-the-ground outreach efforts. Following our lead, visioning sessions with community members to help inform park renovations and programs were hosted on evenings and weekends for the first time to ensure they were accessible to as many people as possible. Essentially, we've created a state-of-the-art greening process, transforming many asphalt and concrete empty spaces into flourishing green oases by way of input from all parties involved, including the important voice of community members. Another great benefit is through the expansive work of Partnerships for Parks Volunteer Program, which facilitates over a thousand It's My Park projects annually and over 1,500 projects in 2022. This hands-on citywide program not only physically beautifies local parks through cleaning, weeding, painting, but also allows participants to connect with nature and each other. Getting outdoors and getting to know your neighbors is a rewarding experience, especially for New Yorkers who perhaps don't have their own backyards to gather in, as well as for colleagues at work at home who need team building opportunities. We also saw during the COVID-19 pandemic incredible work being done by our community groups who engaged in direct relief support, distributing PPE in parks, delivering food to healthcare workers, donating food and clothing to families in need, and leading marches for racial justice, playing critical roles in public health and the social justice movement. I think our ability to work on every level from the ground up, building bridges between communities, grassroots groups, larger organizations, businesses, philanthropists, elected officials, and city agencies creates a reverberating effect that influences all sectors of the city, from local groups working on the ground to elected officials working on policy. In this way, we really play a key role in building a broad-based movement to sustain our city's precious green spaces, which benefits all of us. That's amazing. That that goes way beyond just environmental help. It goes into social justice and other things. That's really amazing. Can you talk a little bit more about specifically about Earth Day and Earth Month? What do they signify and how does Partnerships for Parks carry the message of Earth Day into the work it does all year long? Absolutely. Well, we do have a saying at Parks that Earth Day is every day here at Parks, but um, Earth Day is really a time to honor our green spaces and raise awareness around how we care for them in an effort to create a greener future for our city. The first Earth Day in 1970 was a call to action about environmental issues of that time, air and water pollution mostly, resulting in historic demonstrations here in New York City in Union Square Park which speaks volumes about the role of parks in the greater environmental movement, public life, and protest. The theme of this year's Earth Day is invest in our planet. For those of us who lived in cities, caring for urban park spaces is simply the best way and most direct way to do this. Creating opportunities for people to get their hands dirty, connect with nature and each other, and make a direct impact on their communities is what we're in the business of doing here at Partnerships for Parks 365 days a year. Whether we are providing workshops and coaching, supplies and materials, small grants, or on the ground logistical support to local groups caring for parks, it is all done to support healthy, thriving, and a more equitable park space, and ultimately a healthy, thriving, and more equitable planet. Fantastic. And on a more personal level, do you have a favorite park in New York City and why? Of course, this is really a loaded question. I have so many favorite parks, but I will say that my truly favorite park is Astoria Park. That's my local park. I really love the waterfront view of the East River and Manhattan, the symmetrical position between two beautiful bridges, the abundance of London plane trees that it has, along with a variety of newly planted flowering species around the track area. I go running there and take long walks, talking on my phone to family and friends. 
My husband even proposed to me on the viewing deck of the historic Astoria pool. So I have so many memories in that park and while some are social. Most of them are sanctuary like it's just a place where I can go to reset and be reminded of the big picture of what my day-to-day work with Partnerships for Parks achieves for the average park goer in New York City. Pat, perhaps I could ask you about KBRA's experience volunteering with Partnerships for Parks. I'd be interested to know why you chose our organization to partner with and what the employee response has been. Sure. As part of our firm's commitment to corporate social responsibility, we had a strong desire to partner with nonprofits that really make a difference in the communities in which KBRA operates, and at the same time, give our employees hands-on volunteer experience. We came across Partnerships for Parks, and we were immediately drawn to your organization because of the overwhelmingly positive feedback on the work you do throughout the city. We also loved that Partnerships offers our employees the chance to revitalize together and spend time in the city's green spaces. And now that we partner with you every year on Earth Day, it's really a fun way to get our employees more involved in Earth Month and thinking really more broadly about the role that they can play in the environmental protection and conservation movement. Our volunteer projects on Earth Day have been a huge success across our company People love the chance to volunteer with their colleagues, uh, take some time away from their computers, and revitalize one of the many beautiful parks throughout New York City. Well, thanks so much for your continued support in our It's My Park program. What are you looking forward to most with KBRA's upcoming volunteer project this Earth Day? Yeah, this year, KBRA is volunteering in Thomas Jefferson Park in East Harlem, and our people you know, they give rave reviews of our volunteer day, and we're really excited for this year's project. I've been with KBRA for almost seven years, and we've grown to over 500 people globally. I'm personally most looking forward to spending some time in a more relaxed setting with colleagues from different groups that I don't normally get to meet with regularly. It's so gratifying to get back together. And uh, we're really looking forward to doing this this year in Thomas Jefferson Park. On that note, I want to thank you, Shannon, for joining me to discuss all the amazing work you do at Partnerships for Parks. It's been a wonderful experience getting to partner with your organization and see the beautiful impact of your work throughout the city. Thank you so much. Thank you to Shannon and Pat for a very interesting discussion. To find out more about Partnerships for Parks, please visit cityparksfoundation.org. This concludes our episode. Please email esg at kbra.com with any questions or comments. We also encourage you to visit KBRA's ESG website at esg.kbra.com, where you can find ESG research related to the topics discussed in this episode, further details on KBRA's ESG approach and other ESG-related media items. You can also join our mailing list to access our ESG Weekly Roundup newsletter. 